Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey. On some books you really have to wait uh, a long, long time. And this is the case with this book, which was postponed and postponed. Uh, but you eventually know that the wait will be worth every second of it. Um, Parker, the Martini Edition, Volume 2, aka The Last Call. And yeah, this is obviously a not finished piece, but or a book with a big gaping wound. Um, but yeah, I, I guess you know what I'm talking about because um, Darwin Cook died uh, much too soon uh, in 2016, I believe. And uh, actually, this book should contain three stories uh, by, written by uh, Richard Stark, a.k.a. Donald Westlake. Um, and sort of, <laughs> it does uh, contain three stories here, but the third story um, is just, I have to say, uh, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips uh, stepping in because of um, Cook's untimely death. So this huge, beautiful book here, look at this um, cover or slipcase. Um, it's just stunning. I really love each square centimeter of it. How it, uh, the paint there is reproduced. Um, I talked about the whole series in a very old video, uh, 101, 101, uh, in which I showcased the Martini Edition Volume 1. And quite frankly, when you haven't one of these books, uh, this is the way to go. Uh, because here we have three uh, stories, uh, three adaptations of these Parker novels by Donald Westlake. Um, rendered in this beautiful, lush, old school um, style by Darwin Cook. And actually, I always liked the three first stories in that uh, series of Parker adaptations more than um, the uh, last two uh, stories, um, The Score and Slayground. Because somehow the premise of these two stories is a bit constructed. Um, one is a heist with much too many people, like um, our main guy Parker says in, in the comic uh, for himself. Ah, so this book here is fantastically made, but one thing you can't get it easily, so easily out of the slipcase, at least my edition. By the way, uh, this book here, it's always a bit of a concern when you order a book like this one from um, Amazon, let's say. Um, I mean, they ship it in a huge box and it uh, is kicked around a lot of times. Other sellers maybe even put this in a sack because, hey, there's a slipcase around, so the book here itself is protected. No, I want uh, the slipcase uh, to be intact as well. And so I ordered this by Waltz Comics from Berlin and this arrived really, um, it, it was wrapped in all kinds of materials. I mean, you could have uh, thrown a bomb on it and it would, wouldn't get a ding. As to the build of the new book, uh, it's made very similar to the old one. Um, these slight dings here are just production flaws, if you will, but uh, this book is actually perfect. Uh, I, I really think it is. And uh, so the difference in spine here is has nothing to do by uh, with sloppiness or something. Um, Ed Brubaker uh, created the design of the second volume here. And I think this is a deliberate choice to make it visible that something happened there between volume one and volume two. Um, same with the spine or the slipcases here. They look both gorgeous, but uh, it's really not in place to say, hey, they should have done the second uh, spine exactly like the first one. 
um, yeah, because yeah, somehow there is a reason why you design the second book differently. So, uh, yeah, this uh, second book here for good part is kind of an obituary, ob obituary uh, for Darwin Cook and in a way uh, for Donald Westlake, who passed away before um, he could read uh, the first Parker comics by Darwin Cook, which is uh, sad in itself. Yeah, here you have the people involved again. Uh, this uh, picture here was in the first volume as well, a self-portrait by Mr. Darwin Cook. And yeah, lots of obituaries um, uh, on that man here, who was obviously a pretty uh, difficult guy to get along with, but very charming, uh, very self-confident, uh, funny in lots of ways, very entertaining. Um, uh, always the center of it, uh, got always the center of attention in a way. Um, but in a good way, I, I feel, even though he had lots of quarrels and, and um, yeah, all the creators involved here have a lot of to, stories to, to, uh, um, to, to share with us. And they did on some pages here <laughs> with this uh, very aptly titled Three Guys Walk Into a, ba uh, into a Bar. <laughs> Ed Brubaker, Bruce Tim and Scott Dunbeer share memories and anecdotes of Darwin Cook. This photo here is obviously uh, staged, uh, but there's some truth to it. Uh, Darwin Cook could be, as I said it, not always be the easiest person to get along with, but this talk here between um, uh, the three here is enough evidence uh, to to see how much tenderness uh, and and love uh, still is there for this uh, unique guy. I guess here we have him with his wife, at least on the left page. If this is on the right page, his I don't know. Uh, there uh, the information. There is no information who is who on these uh, photographs. I mean, you can always recognize. The man himself there. Yeah, I guess that's his wife, Marsha. And yeah. And one last salute to to the Darwin Cook. Somewhere above, we suppose. Um, yeah, but <laughs> I'm not finished uh, actually with this video, obviously. I wanted to start talking about uh, the two um, stories here, uh, the score. Um, and as I said, it, uh, the premise here is a bit constructed. It involves a slew of characters um, planning to do, to rob um, a little city, Copper Canyon, and here we have uh, our guy Parker, who is a hitman and uh, not really a hitman, uh, just a criminal who doesn't shy away of uh, killing people when uh, they get in his way. So Paulo's <laughs> the the fun thing is here. This is a sort of a riddle as well because. Uh, Darwin Cook had put a lot of his colleagues in the story here as these criminals. Uh, there's a guy called Cho, aka Frank Cho, and so on and so on. And um, yeah, you can figure this out for yourself. But look at these beautiful layouts. Um, and the incredible versatility of Darwin Cook shines through each page here and it really helps in this presentation here in this oversized presentation I have to show you again the size of it here I have your European album and you can see that's the size of it maybe something American as well here 
as tray bullets, tray paper size, back size here. So this is really a big book in every dimension. Um, where was I? Yeah, uh, and the reprint quality and the paper, you see this, uh, that the paper here uh, is a bit yellowish. It's not due to my uh, crappy lighting or so. Uh, this is just the paper here in itself and it gives you really the pulpy feel. And you... Do you listen to that paper? It's beautiful. It's slick, but it has, it's very smutty and, but it reproduces the colors perfectly. Uh, in fact, uh, you have in these Parker stories, uh, these du duotone stuff here. Uh, each story has a different uh, second color. I mean, a side of black. <laughs> and uh, you can really see here the strokes in, in some places. I don't know if I can show it this. Maybe not so here, but in many places it's obvious uh, where he puts his marker twice or so or thrice and you can see the movements of uh, his hand. And since he was so uh, versatile in, in his craft, it's uh, this is just a joy to, to read this uh, stuff here again. I mean, I don't know for... Uh, <laughs> how many times I've read the story, but before I read it, uh, I've, I read it just, just in the small uh, hot covers. Uh, I guess I showed them in that old video 101 as well. But uh, since I knew that this volume two will come out, uh, I sold them off and yeah, waited for this. Maybe this page here is my favorite of them all. Uh, after they placed a truck to prepare their next heist or the big heist here, the score, and uh, Parker and one guy called Chambers here, they had to walk up that road after they've driven it uh, this very dangerous uh, path uh, down there. It's not so easy to, to drive this with a truck. As you can see here. So I guess, I don't know if Chambers or Parker, I guess it's Chambers, <laughs> said it, we may as well be working for a living because I don't think that this thought will ever cross Parker's mind. So this is maybe uh, Chambers. Yeah. Okay, I, I don't want to spoil you the something of the story here, if in case you haven't read it. Read it. Um, the second story um, is a bit of a constructed setup as well. Uh, so Parker and two colleagues um, try to escape after uh, an, uh, a job. And uh, then they have, have a car accident, which is drawn in, in a very unique fashion. Look at the, these two pages here. I mean, have you ever seen such a silent yet impactful way to show a car accident? I don't know. Uh, including these shapes of the background there that would give which gives you sort of the feel to, yeah, to, to move with the car in, in some way or move around the car as well. Um, Parker survives um, this accident and uh, escapes to this amusement park there here, Fun Island. The problem is that he's seen and he has to fight off is um, the guys who follow him, um, some corrupt uh, policemen and uh, some mob mobsters. So, yeah, if you know the guy Parker, uh, he will survive. And of course, he will turn this 
fun park into a sleigh ground. And here we have this fold out feature of the park. So you have an overview about the um, places uh, in which the rest of the story will take place. So I can hear in the background the rest of the family is waking up. So I have to move to the fast. Um, get my second cup of tea. But look at this beautiful artwork here. I mean, it's it's a fantastic tale. The way he uh, he plans uh, to defend himself and uh, to fight through all against all the odds uh, in this story here is just amazing. Um, and you have to just check it out for yourself. Um, and here we come to now to the gaping wound of this book here, since actually uh, when they first planned these Martini editions, obviously they had in mind to put a third story, a uh, third adaptation by Darwin Cook into this book here. So make it a third, uh, a second trilogy of sorts. Yeah, uh, obviously somebody uh, had a, uh, thought differently and took Darwin Cook away from us. So um, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips stepped in tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow with this pretty nice story. I mean, it's uh, for every Brubaker and Sean Phillips uh, fan, this is a must have. But already on this first two page, you see how <laughs> at least Sean Phillips, I guess, struggled with this duotone approach here. Um, of course, he would wanted to do it uh, the same way, like, or in a similar way, uh, like Darwin Cook did. But it's just, it's just not the same. How could it be? Uh, it's a clever story. It's an interesting story. And <laughs> were the interesting use of the uh, uh, third color aside black blue and here we have red so he took a bit of freedom with the, this approach here but for this is pretty ingenious um, as you will see yeah um, pretty nice story but it couldn't replace uh, a third story by Darwin Cook himself then aside of the this talk uh, that I've spoken uh, already about, we have some illustrated uh, or illustrations from Parker uh, novels that he did. He completed these ones for the hunter, and these are. I wouldn't have guessed that this is a uh, Darwin Cook. But when you look at it, it has sort of the same perfection. And of course, <laughs> the way he uh, paints women, it's very much the same. But this highly detailed uh, um, art with lots of different tones. I wouldn't have guessed that this one would have been by Darwin Cook, but I would be amazed and nevertheless if I see it uh, by whom this would have been done. This, uh, not, I'm not, I'm out of my grammar. It's, it's Saturday morning, folks. Uh, but I guess um, when you click one of my videos, you know what awaits you in terms of English grammar, language and pronunciation. So look at these beautiful pulpy pictures here. Um, such a good decision to, to include these here. And here we have unfinished uh, illustrations for another Parker uh, novel, The Mourner. Some uh, who obviously would have been um, executed in a similar way like uh, these ones for the hunter and and uh, some 
preparing sketches, uh, figure, figure his way through how to, to depict uh, the story, illustrate the story. And followed by some other um, even more looser um, process art uh, that show how Darwin Cook uh, tried and got his handle on that character Parker. Oh yeah, there's there's uh, one double page spread uh, in the score. Which is just amazing, and I guess that was the pre-drawing for it. And look here, this mass massive uh, guy there. This charcoals, whatever, and here just uh, it's just perfection how he drew. Some funny ad for the hunter. Yeah, it's even though this will forever feel incomplete in a very, um, yeah, hurting way, uh, in a sad way, it will still be one of the most beautiful books in my collection, like the first volume is for sure. Um, one of the first, uh, uh, one of the most beautiful books in my collection. Um, yeah. Death's Bitch Kids, if you haven't known it. So... Yeah, fantastic book. What can I say? Um, the Martini edition of Parker by Darwin Cook and Richard Stark, of course, aka Donald Westlake. Beautiful, beautiful book. Get it while you can. Um, it's worth every penny. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.